this strange new world around me? What does it hold in store for a dreamer such as myself? Hey there, Mirgo here, and join us for a midnight viewing at the Mojave Drive-In, where you will be abducted and have your brain removed in the Big Mountain Research Facility. Here, science is king, creatures are spliced together, and ethics take a back seat. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Ah, who cares? Welcome to the Mirgo Spectre for Fallout New Vegas Old World Blues. Looking at your Pip-Boy radio, you'll notice a station called Mysterious Broadcast inviting you for a midnight science fiction feature. Don't mind if I do. Head to the Mojave Drive-In outside of Nipton at midnight and interact with a crashed satellite and uh-oh! You awaken inside Fallout's version of the Black Mesa Research Facility wearing nothing but a hospital gown. This place is called Big Mountain, though your character refers to it as The Big Empty. It's a crater somewhere on the border between California and Nevada and was the center of scientific discovery before the bombs fell. This is where you experience the most annoying part of the DLC, the Think Tank. The Think Tank! This is a group of five robo-scientists, the original pre-war members of Big Mountain, who are all out of touch, borderline insane, and sometimes annoying beyond all measure. There's Dr. O, who prefers being called Dr. Zero. He's a generally unpleasant robotics engineer. Dr. Eight is an acoustician who only talks in sounds unintelligible to me, though your character seems to understand him sometimes. <laughs> Dr. Boros is the animal guy, and he claims to have created Cazadores and Night Stalkers. They are my living, breathing DNA test tubes. Thanks a lot. Dr. Dalla is the chief researcher of mineralogy and medical sciences with degrees in curiosity and advanced curiosity. She's also into formography, which is basically a robotic thing where she gets off watching you breathe. Bloop, 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 bloop. It's really weird. Leading the others is Dr. Klein, who is a complete jerk and the biggest reason to go nuclear at the end of the DLC. Dalla! Get the spray before it excretes all over everything! When you first meet them, they talk at you for 25 f***ing minutes. Mostly with jokes like mistaking your toes for penises. And are those penises I see wriggling on its feet? Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. Yeah, it's kind of funny, but Jesus f Christ. These jokes are non-stop throughout the entire DLC, and they're all pretty lowbrow. Down at the end of the hall is ball storage for jocks who like balls. Like, like Richie Marcus. Marcus. Do you hear me, Betsy? Richie likes balls. Anyway, during this excruciating conversation, you learn that you were maliciously abducted and lobotomized. Not like One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest, more like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I thought you said you could just read his brain electronically. Oh yes, but we'd have to get it out first. It could always be replaced, you know, if you think it's important. That is, your brain was replaced and then misplaced on the very same day. Oh, by the way, your heart and spine were also removed for some reason. Don't worry though, you're fine. In fact, you get some new perks due to your now semi-cybernetic nature. One thing that's kind of weird is that you can complain about having your organs removed and even ask why, and the think tank robots just respond with things like, We removed your brain. Yes. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. That's not helpful. Speaking of which, they are all very much assholes and refer to you as a lobotomite. As you'll learn, there are a bunch of other lobotomites inside the Big Empty, and none of them are happy to see you. For some reason, as the think tank will continually remind you, you are still capable of higher levels of reasoning, unlike the other lobotomites, despite your brain condition. Dr. Klein informs you that Dr. Mobius, a rogue think tank, most likely has your brain after it presumably got flushed down the pipes, and it's up to you to kill him to get it back. Obviously, before you can confront him, you have to do a whole bunch of things, so giddy up. It is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone. Getting your brain back requires you go to various locations around the Big Empty and do things. 
You get a gun called the Sonic Emitter that can disable force fields, and you'll need that to get to Dr. Mobius. You'll also get a stealth suit that talks to you. It pleasantly reminded me of Enseric the Longsword from Neverwinter Nights, though not as fleshed out. You're my best friend forever. While running errands, you'll constantly be taunted by Dr. Mobius and set upon by his robo-scorpions. You're no match for science! This culminates with a boss fight against a giant robo-scorpion that's kinda cool. When you finally meet Dr. Mobius, he's just as aloof and out of touch as the other robo-scientists. Hello there. Uh, you are there, aren't you? He tells you that you're welcome to your brain, though you should talk to it first and see if it wants to rejoin you on your adventures. Honestly, the conversation you have with your own brain is pretty hilarious. Not for nothing, but your brain is a douche. Ah, lovely. Figure that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? Whether it agrees to hop inside your head again or not, you end up returning to the think tank and deciding the fate of Big Mountain. The Big Empty is very science fiction-y. The crater is littered with machinery and gizmos that look straight out of a 1950s sci-fi movie. In the center of the crater is the dome. This contains the think tank and the coolest player housing in New Vegas called the Sink. Within this sink are various appliances. Once upgraded through fetch quests, you'll be able to talk to them and utilize their functions. These include Muggy, a miniature Securitron who can scrap coffee cups and dinner plates. What do you want, Muggs, huh? You some kind of sick mug hoarder? Oh god, give me the coffee cup, please! It's sitting there in your pack taunting me! The biologic research station that can grow plants and really wants your seed. How did they get the DNA? Did they steal my seed, man? Ready to receive your seed. I won't have my semen stolen again. No. A jukebox that upgrades your sonic emitter. Damn, it's good to be back online. The book shoot that turns pre-war books into blank books and can scrap pencils and clipboards. Ready to eradicate sedition. Some light switches that dislike each other and can offer temporary special bonuses. Trust me, sweetie. You're better off not thinking about that frigid little ice queen. A germaphobic actual sink that lets you fill up water bottles with purified water. Do you know how many germs are in one cubic centimeter of dirt? Seventy hundred gajillion. A toaster that can scrap small appliances and has some serious anger issues. Tremble world before my electric heating coil of doom! And the central intelligence unit who acts as a merchant selling ammunitions and energy weapons, as well as being one of the few who can fully repair your equipment. Overall, the sink is fantastic. It has everything you need. Plenty of storage, a bed, fun conversations, and unique capabilities. The only downside is all of the ridiculous fetch quests you have to go on to get everything up and running. Once you do though, it's well worth it. The edge of the crater is surrounded by a perimeter fence and trying to leave will have you teleported back to the sink. This works even when overburdened, so you could load up on crap and then just teleport back to your house. It's quite nifty. Around the crater are various labs where experiments are conducted and you'll likely go to each of these on your quest to find your brain. Each lab is unique and interesting. One has you fight a giant dog, another has you run through increasingly more difficult simulations to upgrade the stealth suit. The stealth suit is ridiculous, by the way. And when fully upgraded, it lets you move 20% faster while sneaking and comes with a plus 25 bonus to the sneak skill. Easily the best stealth armor available and maybe our second reason to do the DLC. In addition to the stealth suit, there's a couple of new weapons. If you're into energy weapons, you can find fancy laser rifles called lairs. For melee, there are proton axes, saturnite fists, scientist gloves, and the X2 antenna. There's also the K9000 Cyberdog gun, which sucks pretty hard and whines when you holster it. The weapons are really cool, and though I don't melee, there seem to be a lot of new options for those of you that do. As for creatures, it's mostly lobotomites and cyberdogs, though there are some night stalkers, cazadores, robo brains, Mr. Handies, and turrets. There's also the robo-scorpions that shoot lasers and explode when they die. I was crippled or killed so many times from their explosion that it drove me crazy. The giant robo-scorpion boss fight is really cool though and offers you multiple paths to beat it. You can straight up shoot it to death or run around and figure out a way to disable it. There are also some skeletons. What the crap is that about? Maybe it's explained somewhere but I don't read all of the terminals.
As of recording this video, I've only played Honest Hearts and Old World Blues, so I can't comment on the other New Vegas DLCs. Through my internet research, I've come to the general understanding that the DLCs are all pretty divisive, so there's no best DLC. With that said, I do not love Old World Blues. In fact, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. I think the sync and the stealth suit make it worth playing, but the rest of it is an absolute slog. I guess if I found the jokes funny, I would rate it higher, but I don't. Remember the 25 minute conversation with the think tank in the beginning? Holy sh**. I practically fell asleep in the middle of it and when it was finally over, I couldn't remember what was going on or what I was supposed to do. Not exactly the best way to start an adventure, though you do get to kill them all in the end if you want. Speaking of the end, you don't really get to make any neat decisions. It's basically whether or not you kill the robo-scientists, including Mobius. I personally found Mobius the most agreeable of the think tanks, so I didn't see a reason to straight up murder him. Not so much for the rest. Some of you might like this DLC and that's fine, I just didn't. If you like this video and you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. If you can think of anything interesting to say about the DLC, leave a comment below. We would love to see how many of you actually liked it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, all you'd have to do is program it to say uh, what and I don't understand and where's the T and who does the difference? What? See what I mean? I'd notice the difference. Well, no, you wouldn't. You'd be programmed not to.